All right, so let's start building uh, situations where we are no longer thinking about code as a process. In other words, I need to get a name and I need to uh, concatenate it with an age and then I need to calculate. Those are all processes. So now with object-oriented programming, we want to start thinking of things as objects or, uh, or nouns, for example. And I'm going to expand on that in this example. I'll give you some ideas on how that's going to work. So this is pretty basic setup, uh, nothing scary or fancy here. We've been doing this in the past. Have some extra using statements. I think I'll add that using statement, static, so uh, system. You don't have to do anything with the console right line. Okay, so this should look familiar. I have a student one, first name is Lilo, student one, last name is Pelikai. Uh, we're keeping track of scores. First score, they got 85, and second score, she got 95. I guess she was a little bit more focused on the second one. Um, so pretty basic, nothing, nothing too out of the ordinary here. But then what comes along is what if we have another student to, uh, I got to remember his first name, okay, right, equals ND, and then string, uh, let's see, student to uh, the L name, that one was capitalized. You can see pretty quickly that um, this is going to get, or I can't spell Jones, 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 there it is. Um, it's going to get kind of cumbersome pretty quickly. And so what we're going to do is take a step back and look at this code from an example of, um, well, technically these are students. So we're describing an object, a noun, and this noun is students. And it appears if we abstract this out or look at it from a higher level, that our students tend to have a first name. Our students tend to share the last name. They share a score one and they share a score two. So it would be better if we create this code in such a way that we create a blueprint of students that all students can be created from so that all students will have a first name and last name without us having to recreate these variables every time. And that's the core behind object-oriented programming. So we're going to create a student class or a student blueprint. All right, so we're going to do that now. Before I move into that, though, I'm going to bring this to your attention. We always get this defaulted to program. And so I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to choose rename because program isn't very descriptive. So I'm going to rename and you can see that it's highlighted in blue here. And I'm going to call this my student, but I don't want this to be my student class because my student class is going to be my blueprint. This is an application, if you will, that's going to be using my student class or my student um, objects or blueprint. So I'm going to call this and get into the habit of calling it student app. An app also kind of it, this is just going to let me know. Are you sure you want me? To, are you sure you want to do this? And and shall I Visual Studio then check to see if you have any other code with the name program? And if so, I'm going to refactor it or change it so it'll rename it all and make it all work for you. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Um. So my point was that student app. Then anytime we see this app, that's sort of the the idea that if we see a student app dot cs, notice we're creating a cs file. That that's where my main is going to be. That that's where my program is going to start. So that's awesome. Okay, um, for the short run though, and we're going to change this in a minute, I'm going to put my employee class on the same screen and then we'll break it out uh, shortly. But this is for demonstration purposes for things to come. All right, so I can put this uh, student class in the same file. I'm going to make sure it's outside of the opening and closing curly braces of my student app. And I'm going to create a new class and we're gonna call this one student. So open and closing curly braces. This is where I'm gonna create my blueprint of students. In other words, we've decided that all of our students have a first name. So I'm going to create a public. So this is important here because public means that no matter where this, no matter what CS file this is in, or no matter what uh, solution or namespace, Okay, all of these things are going to start to look familiar now. No matter where the code resides, whatever code wants to create a student from my class has access to it because I've said this is going to be public. It's available to whoever wants to use it. So publicly, I'm going to create a, let's see, we're going to create a string that has first name. And I'm making this lowercase on purpose, and you'll see why here in a minute. 
And I'm going to have a public string last name. And we've also decided that uh, our students all have a score one and a student also has a score of two. So now what you're starting to see is I'm creating a blueprint in which all of my students will have exactly the same fields. They have the same values, or not values, but they have the same, um, I, don't say, I don't want to say properties yet, but they all, okay, they all have the same properties or data fields. Okay, so now I can do this a little bit differently. Now we're going to do what's called create an instance of an object. Instance of an object. There's a lot of fancy words from the student, make that capital student class. In other words, I am now going to stamp out a student from this blueprint. And the first student I'm going to stamp out using this blueprint is going to be Lilo. So let's just comment this all out so we have it as a reference, but we're going to make it better. All right, so now let's create Lilo. So first of all, in order to create a new object, a new student object that's going to be Lilo, we want to create, we need to define it. So we're going to say employee. So in the, let me just verify or, or uh, reiter reiterate. In the past, we've said that we're going to create a variable that's a string data type. Well, now we're going to create a variable that is an employee. Uh, I'm sorry, not employee. Guess what I was just doing in my last video? A student data type. So we're creating a student data type and we'll just call this student one. And in order to create the new object, we have to use the word new. We're going to define or call out this class. So we're going to create a new student. And then for now, we're just going to put parentheses. Okay, we'll see why in a little bit. All right, so we're going to create a new student. We're going to call it student one. So now automatically by doing this, student one has a first name variable. It has a last name variable score one and score two. So if I want to redo what I did up there with Lilo, I can say student one, and we're going to use what's called dot notation, dot. And you can see that I'm starting to get this IntelliSense says, oh, I know this is a class and it's got first name and it's got last name. It's got some other things too. But for now, I have a first name. I can click on that. Yay, first name equals Lilo. And then you can do the same thing for student one dot last name. I'm just hitting the tab equals Pelikai. Uh, and then score one and score two. You get the idea. I'm not going to finish that out. Now we can also make the second student same way. Student, student two equals new student. Now student two has those exact same names, field names that we can access. In other words, now I can say student two dot first name is equal to <clears throat> what do we do? Indy, I N D I E or oh, whatever. Indeed, oh whatever. Okay. Oh, and he's a semicolon. So I think you get the idea. So now we're creating two different objects from the same class. And keys McGillicuddy, that's me. L name dot L <laughs> L name tab equals Jones. And my dog's even groaning at me over the background there. Okay, and so I think you understand, I, I'm hoping that this is what is coming across, is that we have now created much more simply than lots of different variable names, we've created two objects. I've created one student that has certain values, but the same names, if you will, they all are going to be created from this blueprint. All right, so I kind of alluded to the fact that oftentimes we don't have the class, we don't want the class necessarily on the same file as our app because we want to make this class available to whoever wants it. So we kind of want it in its own CS file. We don't want it on the same CS file as our student app. I mean, it's convenient, but let's make it a little bit better. So let's do this. Um, I'm going to go up to my project folder, my project name, student app, and right click on it. And I'm going to find about midway down, add, 
and then I'm going to add a class. So now I'm making a brand new CS file that, let's see, I'm going to call it ah, student. So it's going to get a file name. We don't have to add the CS. It's going to do it automatically because class is selected. So we're creating a new student class that's going to reside in its own student.cs file. Now at the moment, I'm getting a red line because Visual Studio is trying to let me know, hey, you've already got a student class. This is a no-no. I -no, said, so I know. So what we'll do is we will cut this out. Cut it out. Okay. Uh, get rid of that. And now... Notice that we've got red squiggly lines because uh, the compiler is trying to let me know that the IDE is trying to let me know that I don't know where F name is. There's no such thing as F name because it can't find uh, something that's defining what an F name is. Well, let's go back into our student file. And once we put those things in here, <clears throat> I'm going to shift B, shift control B to rebuild it all to make sure that everything's seeing each other. Now if I go back into my student app, is oh, right, I understand. I now know by looking in student where to find the F name and the L name, and so I'm all happy. So now let's just finish this video up with a print. Let's do a right line, and let's print out uh, student1, one, student1 one dot first name, and I don't know, something silly like nose plus student two dot first name. That has a whole lot of meaning, but it, you'll see this as we build it. Uh, so then we're going to control F5, and then we should see Lilo knows Indy. Probably should have made that plural, but um, anyway, still works. So we've seen a lot in this video, but this is the foundation that we need to have a good grasp on in order to move on to the next topic. So make sure you understand what we're doing here and I will see you in the next video.